Good evening, America, and good afternoon, Australia, and welcome to everyone listening across the world. I'm so delighted to be back on the show today, and this is Artwork You Deserve with Tracy Eaton. Now, for all of you listening live on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, we have Payo listening to respond to all your questions, answer your comments, and provide you with links to anything that we talk about today, and in particular, Tracy's website, because it's phenomenal. Now... Hello everyone. I'm sorry about that. I'm hoping you can hear me loud and clear again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Breath. <laughs> you dear, dear. Okay. <laughs> it does happen, but it's not supposed to happen to me when I'm interviewing Tracy Eaton live on air on artwork you deserve. That's just not what Tracy it's deserves. Not good enough. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> now, lovely audience, welcome again. Uh, this is the final in our series of shows with the gorgeous Tracy. And just to let you know that even though this series of shows finalised, we're actually going to keep updating you because there's some really exciting things happening for Tracy. And I want to keep you up to date with those things as they happen. We're going to talk about that later in the show. Um, as you know, Tracy is an exclusive modern artist and she has created the commissioned art pieces for the Academy Awards, the Oscars, for the last three years, which is a powerful accomplishment and testament to her amazing artwork. She's passionate about creating artworks and does this across a number of genres, which we've been talking about um, over the series of shows in the last five weeks. But today, in our last show, I want to talk about um, the business of art. And in talking about the business of art, I want Tracy to talk about an exciting development in her artistic business. Good morning. Good afternoon, Tracy. <laughs> Good afternoon. How are we? Good. I'm I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So an important development. Hmm, there's been one or two, but the most recent, and I'm yes. guessing this is the one that you're alluding to, is as of the first of October, and you guys are the first people to hear this. I will be releasing it um, next week, actually, in terms of imagery and things, and officially uh, on my socials. But as of the 1st of October, I will be moving into a permanent uh, retail gallery and public studio, which is very exciting. I know, go me. I know. <laughs> um, We've yeah, been so talking about this audience for a while and it's kind of been percolating in the background and I, I just, it's an incredible accomplishment for Tracy um, when she tells you about where it is and what it means for her and her business. So it's been, you're right in that I've been thinking about a gallery space for a very long time and I've been tossing up whether I, I have my own, get, oh, I've got my brush in my hand, my own gallery or <laughs> I work or I work with existing galleries within the Gold Coast and around Australia to promote my product. Mm. Um, it felt right for me, maybe not the right for all artists, but in terms of my brand and me, it felt right that I have my own space. I, I call me a control freak, yeah. but when it comes to the brand, comes to how we how we present our, the brand in the public face, I really wanted it to be in control of that and not have to be reliant on other people to do that for me. So um, hence yeah. why I decided that my, my own gallery would be the best way to go. Further to that, I also thought it would be a great idea to actually have a working studio within that space because so yes. many people, and I, I notice this a lot when I've been painting outdoor walls, but so many people love watching 
that whole yes. of a piece coming together. So uh, that will be a gallery event space and a live working studio. So I'll be painting there every single day. The reason it's also a great location, which you alluded to, is there is a place called Marina Mirage on the Gold Coast, which is full of beautiful yachts, restaurants, um, very high-end, yes. exclusive shops. Like, it's stunning. Fashion, jewellery. Lovely everything people. Everything you can imagine in terms of a luxurious lifestyle. Uh, and it's, mm. it's held in a suburb that has some... Just, it's, just, it's just a gorgeous location and certainly a demographic that I love working with. So it suits well for both me personally and my brand to be in that space. So I'm very excited. Yeah. And okay. I'm equally excited because I know the space and I know the potential for people to see what Tracy creates, which is immensely important for an artist. And the space that Marina Mirage is, is just, you know, it's kind of those spaces where you can people watch. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of Rodeo Drive in LA. Oh, very much. Because, very much. Yeah. 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 Fifth Avenue, New York. It's got it's the same that. Thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Same it's got that vibe and that energy and that people and um, if you like to people watch like I'd like to secretly do, if you go and sit and have coffee, it's fantastic fun to just sit there and watch people go about their business. But now you'll be able to see Tracy go about her business, which is an amazing coup for her and a wonderful, we're wonderfully excited on at this happening for you. Now, you. in one of our earlier shows, Sorry, I was just going to say, it's an interesting Sorry, one Jay. because traditionally artists have always sold through the gallery channels, uh, predominantly through gallery mm -hmm. channels until online become more and more prevalent. Now, there's been lots of discussion of particularly post-COVID or during this whole COVID um, era that we, we are in, that online is the, only, the primary way now for people to sell artwork. Now, this is an interesting yeah. one because there's a lot of discussion saying, no, don't bother with traditional galleries. People don't need to come and see them. Well, actually, I strongly disagree. Um, if you're buying a print and therefore it's like a poster, fine. basically, that's fine. Go online, spend 100 bucks. That's no problem because it doesn't necessarily have the, the emotional draw that an original piece of art does. My experience over the last 15 years has shown me yeah. that people buy when they can see it, touch it, feel part of it. They, feel it. So I think it's really important that art is still live and I, my gut yes. is telling me that the majority of my work will still continue to be sold from a gallery space or from a, a, yeah. a physical location, whether it be another gallery down the track yeah. overseas or um, a homeware store, but an actual physical space where people can touch and see it. So, yeah, so I just wanted to say that because I think that people, some people even get nervous about going into galleries because they're like, oh, what do we look at? I don't know. I don't know anything about art. Just do it because it's the best space to really experience yes. what art is. Definitely. Yeah. And with this space, you'll have the added advantage of Tracy, the actual artist, being in on site. My chaos. And so, in all my chaos. Yeah. It's not chaos, it's beautiful, creative gorgeousness. <laughs> oh, I agree. It's absolutely beautifully creative. But as my hubby said, oh, you can't just like chuck stuff on the floor when you're partway through a painting, like, yeah, okay. so bad. Because that's you how can. I roll. Yeah. Because exactly. it's your space. Yeah, Absolutely, exactly. and people would expect nothing less because <laughs> they want to see authenticness, That's you know? Right. The, only, the only difference is I'll, I may well clean it up at the end of the day as opposed to leaving it for two or three weeks until I finish my painting. He's got a point there. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, in some of the earlier shows, we spoke about uh, your journey into full-time um, being an artist versus part-time or it being um, a, a side hustle. Mm -hmm. And um, we just uh, we discussed how um, your journey is
Oh, you're back. No, you kind of are talk for me. <laughs> yes, woo! yes. I think you were asking about my journey. Is that right? Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yep. And if I recall, we did speak about that when our earlier shows about my corporate and my health background. So I'm guessing you were asking to reiterate how that worked for me. Yeah, cool. So we got this. Um, my, my corporate, my corporate, corporate background, I think initially was, a, was definitely a, a handbrake and a challenge for me creatively. Not that I knew it at the time because it actually it was the one thing that I poured my life into thinking that was the right thing to do. And I squashed and squashed and squashed my creativity until I couldn't any longer. Then it became an yeah. absolute asset because without the skills that I learned, the need to, you know, the importance for sales and marketing and process and all those very essential business tools that are, for me were definitely a learned, well, most people were a learned skill. I don't believe I would be able to grow my business and focus on my business the way that I need to because I would continue to paint. And that's not, that's not enough, when, as we discussed last week, when you're growing a business. Um, occasionally now, however, just because uh, when I get a bit anxious, I, as I said before, yeah. I'm a bit of a control freak. So when I get a bit anxious I, and I need a sense of regaining control, Interestingly, I yes. don't turn to my canvas for that because that's too vulnerable a state. I turn to business. So I consider yeah. it even now sometimes a little bit of a handbrake because it's the even if there's not much that I need to do that at that moment, I'll find something. So it becomes a procrastination activity when I'm feeling a little bit out of control or a little bit anxious. So interesting balance yeah. between the two. Yeah, yeah, and we explored how sometimes you have to break up that creativity and so conversely have to break up the business. So that balance yes, very, as a professional artist is important. It's essential. Otherwise, I do believe that art becomes more of a hobby unless you have a group of people around you. If you have a team of people around you who can literally take over all of the business operations and you have the ability to then oversee the brand, look at the strategic direction, make sure that the head things are heading in the way that you, you want, and then have the majority yeah. of your time focusing on creating. Perfect. So for anybody who's out there, if you decide, like the actors and writers have professional, um, what are they called? Uh, they're called agents who look after, who look after them. Yes. Um, there yes. is nothing like that within visual arts that I know of. Apart from a gallery. Oh, really? Really. Really. And galleries are very different. So you think about Chris Hemsworth, one of my favourite actors. Yes. You know, yes. His, his agents, they look after his brand, look after his business, as yes. you would expect, find opportunities, create leads. You know, um, that's, from what I can see, there's nothing like that within a visual arts perspective because historically, as I said earlier, people have run through the galleries Whereas now there's opportunities to absolutely disrupt the industry and go, hey, let's treat visual yes. artists like a lot of like musicians, like actors, like a lot of other creative people out there and focus on finding these people significant opportunities, sales, marketing Trinity. plans, new, mar new, new markets, everything. Yes. Why not? Yes. Why not do that? And, and then they get paid a percentage on you know, what we sell, of yeah. course. Well, I don't know how it works, Absolutely. actually. That's how I would imagine it would work. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, that's, I didn't realise that artists didn't have that same opportunity for having an agent. Um, Not that I've found. No, well, I haven't heard of it. There's there's PR agents, there's agents for yeah. actors, et cetera, et cetera. But I have not heard of agents specifically for the creative and the creative you, arts. So you have musical agents. That's it. Unless you're yeah. represented by a gallery. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But that's a very interesting concept to think about. Hmm. Um, Tracy, in the third show, we talked about your tools of trade. And yep. um I was really interested in the everyday products that you use, like bubble wrap and cling wrap. And I was curious, 
to know how you discovered that these everyday products worked well to create what you needed them to within your artwork. Was it a chance discovery or? Uh, a bit of both. With cling film, I've got, so the, I cover my floor with vinyl and, so, and often it gets covered yes. in paint. Like if I showed you the floor, it's just covered in paint. Um, and I had some cling film because I put cling film over top of all of my palettes so I can just yes. throw the cling film paint. away yeah. it's easier yeah and yeah. I had some cling film on the floor on top of some paint and then I didn't realize when I went yes. to pull it off it made cool little, little lines like oh that's nice I like it so I did some um, looking <laughs> online to see who else was doing this and it, obviously there are people doing it so I got quite excited about what that looked like and how I can integrate that into my, my work and then through teaching myself um, particular techniques to protect that patterning, which is important. Um, with That's how I, I use that one. Bubble wrap, on the other yeah. hand, I, I, do, I remember, I don't really know where this is the camera, but I have some kind of recollection that this particular painting I wanted, I wanted circles, but I didn't want hardcore like perfect circles oh, I don't like perfect okay and, and, a, and a look I was going for I was like oh I wonder what, if, if uh, what would work and then I just went well wait a minute bubble wrap circles let's give that a shot so I chucked it on and painted painted the bubble yes. wrap chucked it on and away I went and once again once I thought about that then I looked all over YouTube and bubble wrap <laughs> is used in so many ways in painting it's actually yeah. fun so I'm quite keen to explore a few more avenues and ways that I can use bubble wrap to create an effect and technique that I want or look that I want. Yeah. So it's oh, a matter of playing. Cool. I, think I've said, I think I've said before that as adults, we forget how to play. You know, we're told to be serious, mm. responsible, and and playing is 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 our way of of our intuition guiding us and just just forgetting yeah. about expectation and giving it a go. So I think that I'm yeah. in a very lucky situation where I still get to play, which is cool. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. Um, and, and speaking, you know, of play, there are now specialists who specialise in adult play because so many adults have forgotten how to play and it's actually a, an essential part of our psyche and our oh. mental health is so to much. make sure we play and we forget how to do it as adults, which is really sad. You're right. We forget the, like, you know, you see a mud puddle. Why not jump in it? Because you might feel, <laughs> so, you might, it's fun. Why not? And the first thing you think is, oh, mud, wait a minute, I've got to do the washing. But forget about it. Just give it a shot. Like, and the, I guess yeah. the freedom that comes from playing and the, that that's important. I didn't know that there was play specialists for adults, but that's really cool. Yes. Yes, um, I, I have a couple of friends who actually um, work in the realm of corporate playfulness. So they go in and teach CEOs how to be playful and uh, how to get their teams to be a little playful within their work because the research shows that it's so valuable for adults and creativity, Absolutely. mental health, etc. Yeah, it yeah. Yes, yes, it's it's linked to joy and happiness. Um, your work is renowned for its beautiful hand embellishment. And I know that this gives lots of your pieces that beautiful contrast or depth to the artwork. And one of your features is um, using uh, gold leaf and silver leaf and bronze leaf and that's kind of tricky to work with and I wondered how you went the first time you used it. Well lucky for me I don't like things to be a hundred like totally perfect right so the very first time I used it I literally just ripped it up and smushed it in my hands and chucked it on so I was like job done this is this is easy yes. what are people talking about and that was, that was the look I was going for and then all of a sudden I was like okay let's try as soon as you start to get a bit more strategic with it then yeah you have to be careful it's so fine um it'll stick it to your fingers and two seconds fine. Yeah, it is. Uh, I don't very often lay full sheet full sheets down. It's not a look that I enjoy for my work. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. also a bonus for me. I'd have to take a lot more time if I did. Uh, but I did progress yeah. in terms of how I use it to just going, oh, here you go, to um, 
to <laughs> being very particular about where I place it on the canvas. I'll use a combination of flat, lay, like laying it down flat versus crunching it up and having more flake type looks so they've got some texture sticking out. Specific glue that you use to make sure it doesn't tarnish yes. as well, it can tarnish. Uh, and if we're using resin, of course, we need to make sure it's really well stuck down so yeah. it doesn't move. So I have progressed yeah. and I do a combination of both things. When I do use full um, full sheets, full she I do multiple layers because I hate seeing any I hate seeing any lines. Oh. I hate it. Hate it. So yeah. one piece that yeah. had five layers of, of gold leaf as a base, which takes a while. It takes a long while to do. Yes. You have to be very precise yeah. and very slow with your movements, which is also not my strong suit. <laughs> yeah, not slow. Do you? Do you always use your fingers to pick it up and place it or do you use a brush like what's or do you use a combination don't use a brush if I have fingers I'm doing if I'm doing straight sheets I'll often wear yes. gloves because then there's no there's no perspiration on your fingers and also yes. between each sheet like just happened to have some on my desk because I was playing oh, good. Um, <laughs> good between each sheet, yeah, there is a paper sheet as well. So you can actually use that paper to pick it up and pop it down as well. So oh, ideally you want to touch it very little when you're doing it for, for sheeting and more precise stuff. But it essentially it disintegrates almost when you uh, it yeah, changes sure. the way that it is. So sitting in that little 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 pocket see, uh, box there. I don't it looks, know if you can see how yeah, fine thank that you. is. Yes. It's tiny, fine, yeah. and very floaty. Yes. So, and it will yeah. just go really, yeah. really like quickly. that. Yeah. But, oh shoot! Now that's in my cup of tea. Oops. Um, and it will stick just like that too. So it's so. Oh, shoot! Another one in my cup. Of tea. Um. Anywho, welcome to my studio. It's kind of uh oh. Kind of what happens. Yeah, and then you get stuck with gold leaf for ages. That is that's a beautiful demonstration of how tricky it is to work and how with not gold to use it. leaf. And how, which... not, and how not to use it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I figured Tracy, why not. You, yeah. Tracy, no, your fingers with that gold, life, gold leaf on, if you yeah. touch something, does it stay on your finger or does it transfer to the next surface that you put it on? Uh, it depends on how sticky my fingers are. There are, and often it will yeah. transfer over. Like at the moment, it's not transferring onto my jumper. Oh yes, it is. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Takes a while, but if you if your if your uh, canvas is wet in any way and you, you've got it on your fingers, yes, yeah. you intentionally put it somewhere you don't want it on your canvas. So you do have to be quite okay. particular with how you use it. Yeah. yeah. Nails are fine. Um, in longer nails to pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. You actually use your nails for lots of different things whilst you're painting to create direction um, and all sorts of things. Um, so it's great to see that That's they true. come in helpful in your creative process. In talking about embellishment, I'm curious to know when you first started with embellishment, was that an intuitive process for you? Did you Were you painting and thought, oh, my goodness, I want to put diamantes or uh, glitter or was it did it start quite organically and intuitively or is it something that you wanted to play with and see where it went totally organically I just yeah, yeah. I, I just for the moment I started painting I think I actually I should show you guys and this was my very first painting ever it was hanging in my studio I'll see if I can hold on it's the only yes. one that doesn't have embellishment wait it's terrible there you go now Terrible. I, I say it's terrible because obviously we've transitioned since that point. And I look at it and go, yes. mm, I really think that I could do this and this one. No, 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 it's the first one ever. But apart from that, yes. from the second one on, I just was painting a lot. I was painting a gorilla for my husband because he loves gorillas. And I just wanted yeah. to have a little bit of extra shine. I was like, oh, wait a minute. I'll chuck some glitter in the end. That oh, way it went. So and I didn't that, even think yeah, about yeah, it. Just did yeah. it. So, and then, then it's just more yeah. from here about what I put where and how much and what I use. So, yeah, yeah same because with the texture. That, that's one of the 
key elements of your art pieces is the beautiful hand embellishment that you incorporate into a lot of them. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was just curious about where that came from. Now, you do you have a favourite brush and why? I have two. One, I was, both of them I was playing with before. Both very different. Yeah. This particular little one, I like the fact it's got a long handle because I can sit back, I can I can put a whole, hold it in my fist like that. So it's a very uh, yeah. it's an oval tip, oval tip brush, quite thin and very st stiff bristles. I love it because it doesn't yes. lose its shape and I can get quite rough with it. So when I'm using, like even with your piece, I use this brush a lot because when it has texture ah. and I want to get in somewhere, um, oh, one I just finished yesterday as well, the texture was like about that much from the canvas. So I needed to get right in and under. Oh. This brush is perfect. Yes. And it just, as I said, it holds a shape. I can destroy it. I can smash it like that. Yeah. You know, and, and it just bounces can back. Do lots. Love yeah. these ones. Yeah. This one um, is, as you can see by the, by the way, they are used a lot because the colors. They're, they're well used. used. <laughs> they are. Um, this one here, I'm going to be getting some new ones soon because I love there's When I'm doing a lot of smooth blending, um, I don't yep. like to see brush strokes. So this particular brush has got very fine, uh, fine and soft bristles. I can always, I always uh -huh. judge how soft they are as I do this because it's, it's smooth and soft and it's yes, on your face. So I'm due to yeah. get some new ones because this one is quite as soft as I want. But when you use this, it's very fluid, soft, very soft strokes and light pressure, almost yeah. not touching the canvas. And you're just kind of brushing mm -hmm. it in a crisscross motion, and then it's it's beautiful. No, no, no blending lines, no brush strokes, nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do the bristles on the brushes um, have wear and tear? Like I'm looking at the handles and thinking, you know, there's lots of paint and stuff on them, but the bristle, the bristles are the things that get the wear and tear from your painting. Oh, look, they do last quite a long time I'm very hard on my brushes I am a lazy artist yeah. and my brushes do get paint stained because they may or may not not I'm denying sit in water for a period of time before I wash them out so you can get <laughs> you can get brush cleaners you can you know I, I'll take a oh. steel to mine sometimes because I've left it in for too long sorry any artist out there yes. sorry I know it's offensive but these are they're tools of my trade and they deserve more yes. respect than I give them. At the same time, I also love, um, I love it when they start getting a bit rough around the edges too because it helps me to create other yeah. things that I can't get with a really smooth, brand new brush. So, you know, horses yeah. for horses. I just end up buying more yeah, yeah, yeah. than I need to, but that's okay. It takes me a long time wow. to throw out my favourites. I'll only throw them out when they die. When they're really dead, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tracy, we've been filming in your actual studio and that there was a purpose behind that so that the audience could get to actually feel what it is like in an artist's space. Yep. And I wanted to draw the audience's attention to that beautiful um, easel that stands in the back of most of our shows and I wanted to explain to the audience why it looks like that now I've said this to you before I actually really really like that and I know that sometimes you're approached because people want that as their featured artwork so yeah. how often do you replace those and do you sell them I've sold um, one. I've sold. I've been approached many times. I've sold it once, and the and yeah. second and third time that I've been asked, it's like, no, I'm not. Thank you, but I'm not selling it. Um, yes. The time yeah. I did decide to sell it, they were adamant they wanted me to sign it as well, and I just I couldn't do it because it was there was no intent there for me. It was it's a yes. It's it's the leftovers of. It's you your know, working of, space. Yeah, of painting and, and the borders are created and the colours are stuck together and there's no there's no yeah. real balance or composition attached. It's just it, so I felt like I couldn't sign it. But it's the same with my floor. I have been asked by three people if I would sell my flooring when I pick oh, up and replace wow. it because it is just covered in glitter and glue and resin and colour yes. and it's everywhere. But same thing, I'm like, yeah. no, I can't bring myself to take money for something that's 
it's just chaos. <laughs> it's very, it's very, I mean, honoured that people feel I really that like are it. beautiful. I think it's, it's lovely that people do. I think it's really cute. I think it's because it's so bright and cheerful. But I, I yes. can't take, I, I can't honestly take money for something <laughs> that is. It's something that I Your didn't plan. Your working space. Yeah, or something I didn't plan. There was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, you're right. I have been asked yeah. many times. And that's the thing. For you, artistic creation is something that you put a lot of time, thought and energy into, hence mm. your reluctance to part with your working space. For you, your artwork is a bit about creating something specific and yeah. uh, detailed and for people in a special place or a special mm. time or a special environment. And, and so I can intent. understand that. Yes, and full of intent and your special energy and intuition about that particular piece. I just now, that it we spoke. <laughs> Sorry, folks, I just found a whole lot of gold leaf. <laughs> okay, as long the struggle as it's is not real. detrimental honestly. to your health. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, I'm fine. <laughs> Okay, so now we've spoken about a whole heap of different genres that you do um, and you create amazing pieces of wearable art. Um, this particular expression of your artistic talent is based on clothing. Um, can you walk us through how your style around wearable art uh, developed and how it's led you into an expression in these beautiful gowns that you create? Purely accidental, actually. The very one of the first ones that I ever did, I'd been doing. I'd, I told you, I play a lot, right? Um, but body, I, I started doing body painting before I did wearable art. And body painting is great uh -huh. fun because it's so three dimensional and you've got these beautiful curves and shapes, and it's and everywhere like a piece of rebel art is a canvas in itself. So that was fun. And yeah. then I happened to come across an opportunity where I was painting a bride. I think I've mentioned in one of the uh, one of the previous episodes. Yes. And mm -hmm. I needed to create the, um, the bodice was body painted, but the skirt I needed to create. So that yes. was my first entry into, into something that is wearable art because if I had no idea. I'm not a fashion designer. So I <laughs> just... I just went with it. I look, I scrolled through lots and lots of different ideas to get a sense of what I liked and what I think would look good in a, in a wedding gown. Yeah. Um, and then went for it, hot glue and lots of hand sewing later. We created this beautiful gown, which is on my website. Beautiful. So you can check it out. Yes, um, absolutely. And it kind of went from there. So if I started to incorporate costuming, for want of a better word, or wearable art. Actually, you're right, it's not costuming, wearable art every time I yeah. do body paint. So they started to merge and now I'm finding that I'm actually more interested in creating wearable gowns. The clothing. Than, yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it's kind of, it's not fashion it, to me, it's um, they're like statues. They're a permanent piece of yeah. art that actually could be displayed in a, in a shop, in a home, like yeah. anywhere. That's absolutely stunning. So in terms of how that style has developed, it's really been, again, by me just playing with textures, shapes, different fabrics yeah. and the look and feel that I want. Yeah, and now I've yeah. got this cool idea. So as I said, and I think yeah. previous, I've got six designs that need to come out. So watch this space. I know. I'm just thinking about that new um, space in the gallery and you, you'll be able to highlight the at least the blue beautiful gown to start with to yes. show what you can create around wearable art that's Very amazing much. She'll, be, she'll be front and center in a gold on a gold mannequin yeah. of course yes yes was yeah. it you tracy that told me that your mannequins must have heads and faces yes so much oh my goodness i can't paint a non-headed person oh yep. my one doesn't have arms i must confess i've thrown her arms away um but I needed, I need, every time I'm making a gown or I'm, I'm, you know, embellishing some fabric or something that I'm using for a body paint, the arms would just get in the way. So I'm like, oh, radio. Ah. So arms are gone. But she, okay. 
they must have a head. Absolutely must have a head. Oh, yes. Sisters. So I can kind of yes. at least a relation pretend it's a person. Um, it yes. just makes me feel more comfortable. I think I get freaked out if there's no head. <laughs> I don't like it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Tracy, each week we've been talking about um, the fact that you were commissioned to do the um, gifts for the Oscar nominees. How special is it to create something beautiful for that particular big moment in an actor's life? I felt very um, humbled to be doing it because uh, I said in a TV interview a couple of weeks ago, actually, uh, that it's not often that we get to, we, that people celebrate successes. We just tend to yeah, not. We, we don't. rush it over and move on to the next one. Whereas something yeah. like the Academy Awards is an absolute total celebration of their incredible success in the field that they are in. So to be able to, yeah. to create a piece of art that helps to celebrate their creative success and their journey and reaching the epitome of, of, of their whole career, um, that's that was yeah. very cool, really, really cool, in fact. Yeah, Absolutely. And, and the they're pieces, so beautiful, those pieces. Thank you, because they really did, when I was creating them, it really, I did really feel like I wanted to help them celebrate their awesomeness by yeah. giving them something that was beautiful and awesome as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Tracy, one of the other things that we've talked about quite extensively over the series of shows is um, the creation of particular art for developments, commercial spaces and um, offices. And the fact that some of these pieces of artwork are of an immense size. I know that creating big artworks is something that excites you, but for some artists, it's quite daunting. Um, mm -hmm. Why does such a big piece uh, excite your creative processes? Well, I think it would be fair to say that I'm a relatively expensive personality. Like, hi, this is me. <laughs> I don't have, I'm not someone who can sit quietly in a corner. Like, it's just not how I yeah. roll. So I, I feel like yeah. art is so much of an, an expression of life. And because I like to live life big and I am big yes. and cheerful, I think that big, yes. big, big um, pieces, they create a, yeah. a space for me to go nuts. It's so free-flowing and it's open and it's just... It's exciting. From a technical, it's really yeah, em yeah. emotionally. I find it exciting because I can just go, "Oh my god, look at it!" I can, yeah. I can go crazy. Um, yeah. Technically, it's also a nice little challenge because we have to make sure that we have a yeah. viewing distance, so it doesn't look really crappy when you're up close, but, um, nor does it look really bad when you're far away. So. Each piece of yeah. art has a, a, a precise viewing distance. And even though that you go to galleries, you step yeah. back to a certain point and go, oh, yeah, that looks amazing. So technically creating yeah. large pieces, you have to factor that in when you're creating to make sure that it looks good in all aspects. And if it's outside, all directions as well. Yeah. So I quite like yeah. the challenge of Is that. There Is there an energy, a bigger energy, the bigger the painting gets? Look, I think if you're talking about a room that has got a huge piece of art, so essentially a wall, you can't uh -huh. ignore that energy. Um, however, yes. you can still get some really intense energy from a piece that's like a metre by, or say 600 by 900. Uh, everyone in the uh -huh. US, I don't know what that is in inches, but it's, you know, about that wide. That <laughs> Does that help? You know what I mean? About that wide, that. yeah. That, yeah. That's, yeah. It's, you know, that, for me, it's quite cool. Yeah, but it's it's yeah. so that that you can still get immense energy from that based around using the colours and the way that you whatever it is that you're creating to make it quite strong. Uh, if you're more of a traditional yeah. artist, you don't necessarily same thing. You don't need a big piece because the way that traditional realism artists paint is so precise and so technical. Yeah. Um, that they don't need a big piece to have it create a beautiful impact as well so I think it depends yeah. on what you're going for but as I say if you walk into a room yeah. and it's got a whole wall full of artwork you can't ignore it yeah 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 but when um, I did the Tracy, Oscars some my of those... first ones, sorry my first my, I did the Oscars my first ones were 30 by 30 so they were little squares 
Oh, yeah. So that's 12 inches by 12 inches. I know that one. Thank you. I didn't know that either. So there you go. So quite very small. And we still needed to create yeah. impact with those. And we did that using with the use of colour. Very yeah. bold colour. Yeah. Tracy, obviously you created them in Australia. How did you get them to, to the US? Did you have to ship them or fly them or? Ship them. Yeah. And, and that would involve a certain level of, of packing and stuff to make sure that they're not damaged oh, in that no, so transit much. place. We had, we had quite a long lead time, obviously, to make sure we had sufficient time to paint all the yeah. pieces. Then we individually wrapped each one, of course, and then we packaged, we wrapped, we wrapped them first and then we packaged them individually mm -hmm. so that they wouldn't, um, wouldn't move. Yeah. And we purpose-built the crate to make sure that they were solid as anything. And away they went. Oh, yeah. good. And they obviously arrived all beautiful and no problems. I hope so. Otherwise, it would have been unwrapping really <laughs> terrible looking paintings. <laughs> and if any of them did let you know like that, I apologize. I apologize for this <laughs> But I'm sure they would have been fine. I would assume, I would assume, I would assume that they were all perfectly fine. beautiful. Yeah, 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 to yeah. Make yeah. sure that we you know, <laughs> gifted to the right people. I obviously um, had on the outside of the package an image that was removable. So, and what what celebrity yeah. it was going to? So they the the people knew um, what you know what Which piece. One? Was, um, yeah, yeah. Because they're individually and personally delivered to the person that they're supposed to be for, aren't they? Yes. Yes. Yeah. As I said I know, to the other day, you I did ask a question about being, I so volunteered, I wanted to be that career driver, knock on the door and go, here you go, loving your work. Oh, by the way, can I have an autograph? No, <laughs> just kidding. But I would have loved to have, I would have loved to have been a career driver, but no, there was an emphatic art, uh, I don't think so, that's never going to happen. No. Okay, I get it. <laughs> How rude. How rude. I know. I know. <laughs> okay. So um, we now need to talk about commissioned pieces and I'm very conscious of the time and I was going to run um, the audience through the commissioning process but I think that we'll just we'll focus on the commissioned piece that you created for me and what that process was like and then we're going to unveil the piece of art that I haven't seen yet which is incredibly exciting. <laughs> so when Tracy and I first started uh, talking about working together, we were talking about doing something that was a little uh, a bit innovative so that the audience could get to understand what the commissioning process was for an individual. So we've walked the audience through that process and it meant a, a number of separate meetings for Tracy and I to look at the space uh, and decide the space where the piece of art was going to go, to talk about what was in and around that space, the colours of that space and the intent of the um, artwork. And then Tracy produced this beautiful portfolio, stepping out her process, her intuitive thoughts, the colour and the psychology of the colours that she wanted to use, the embellishment that she thought was intuitively right for this painting and, all, and presented in a beautiful portfolio. And then each week what we've done is talked about the stages of that commissioned piece and where we we're up to. And poor Tracy has had to stop each and every week so that we could show you the audience what it was going to look like and which that's incredibly challenging for an artist to stop mm -hmm. mid-creative process. That's not something that Tracy normally does. So we're incredibly grateful that you did that, Tracy, so that we could show everyone how this amazing process of getting a commissioned um, art piece for your home. And I'm wondering if you can walk the audience through some of the colours and psychology for this particular art piece. Sure, I'll get it up precisely for you. One moment, Caller. <laughs> I, I just love the way... Here. Oh, yeah, see, it's a beautiful document in its own right because it just explains so succinctly everything that will go into your artwork and you feel very privileged 
to be on the other end of that creative process. Thank you. All right, colours, are you ready? So we used, you were right, I do like to explain to people what's going on in my head and uh, I think it's important because it helps you to take ownership as well of the piece that ends up being created and then together we can make sure it's right. So, but in terms of colours, the, we really wanted to go, create, as you know, a, a very calm, relaxing space. You're surrounded by a lot yes. of green, so it was also important to create some kind of balance because you, there was not mm. a lot of water around you, and I know you loved water. So no. we needed to yeah. bring that into your space as well to create that nice, that calmness. So for colours, there's few. I normally use at least sort of five, five or more colours. At least, yeah. Uh, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten colors that we used yes. in yours. Um, starting from clay, white, light blues, indigos, oh, like purples, magenta, copper, and rust, yes. charcoal, silver. And did I say white? Yeah, so yeah, I, I can't, I won't read them all out, but to give you an idea, no, um, that's okay. Copper, copper is we use on the copper leaf as the base. And copper very yeah. much is all about becoming the master of your own destiny, uh, understanding your insights and trusting your gut instinct. Um, indigo is all about compassion, independence, inner peace, and creativity. Magenta is all about self-love, love, beauty, compassion, and service to others. So when I was thinking about this piece for you, Tony, I was thinking about obviously your space, but also obviously you, what you do as a, as a business, the personality that yeah. you are, and really wanting to bring out the core of, the, I think, the, the things that get you motivated, that drive you. Yes. And also maybe to give you some yes. things that you needed at the time. Yes. Um, yes. Another one would be white. Anything is possible. Openness, clarity. So that's important. I mean, the light blue is all about trust and communication. Well, you, you're talking yeah. to people all the time. So those two things um, are important. So those, that, to give you an example, that's how I came by the decision to actually incorporate certain colours. We could say, yes, we're yeah. just going to paint an ocean scene or a water scene and it's going to be blue. That's not enough. There's so many different types of blues. I want to delve deeper yeah. into what blue is it and why. And, you know, um, indigo is, is, is a very deep, deep blue. It's got red base, so it's got a bit mm. of a purple feel to it as well so that, yeah. that creates a different emotional impact as, to, as opposed to a cold blue so there's all sorts of things that go into um the color. the color that I do yeah so that was the first stage for you and then yeah <laughs> it was about starting to put that onto <laughs> canvas so that's what I guess you guys have seen yeah. over the last six weeks is how we started with a very bright the gray base, base very oh yes yes and then then we started adding bright colors through uh, and it got very bright and then I've toned it down and then you'll see it's hard it's hard for me to really show you with such a small camera but the final piece has added some more of that bright into it but nowhere near as garish is what it was because that wasn't calming it was pretty but it wasn't calming yes and we wanted something that was more serene than that so oh. that's why we had some a little more remuted tone as well yeah and that's it yeah. so progressively over the last six weeks you're right we've week by week done multiple multiple layers and uh it's driven me crazy <laughs> <laughs> it's really crazy to stop. I've loved painting for you and I've loved the process in a lot of ways, but you are right. It drove me crazy every week to have to stop painting. Yeah. Because I wanted to keep going and finish it and see it, see it come yeah. fruition. I think the other thing was that I actually didn't have any predetermined idea on uh, whether it was going to be a landscape or whether that landscape was going to be. I actually let Tracy determine that I had full trust in her creative process and her intuition to allow her to do what she felt having known me and had lots of conversations I then said over to you Trace you do what you intuitively feel best so that this it is the result of that collaboration that's correct and I think that's a very valid point because a lot of people will come to me and say they want x and I'll often end up with y and they're very happy yeah. with why. And that happens because of our engagement with each other. 
Uh, and I love yes. that people trust me sufficiently to create something that um, is so representative of where they are right now, because that's essentially yeah. what, what your painting is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you want okay. To Let's do this. Oh, my goodness. Keep your eyes closed, people. <laughs> my heart's, my heart's you pumping. Not, you might not notice much of a change, but I'll explain the changes. Tell me that. Oh my goodness. Oh, see, I just love that spot in the middle where the pink is shining through and it looks like the light is coming through from the clouds. It's just beautiful. So, so beautiful. beautiful. From last week, can you see that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me okay? I can. So from last we can. week, we added a lot more light and some depth into this pink. Yes. Added some soft, very soft pink glitter just in here as well because we wanted to have that really strong lit, light. I've added more pink into the water and some more yes. um, palette knife texture into the water. We've lightened up this area as well. We've added a whole lot more light and silver, white, clay and sand into the, the hills in the front. Yes. Um, added some more dark into this corner because I wanted some contrast. Oh, yeah. And yep. what you can't see as well is there's some soft glitters coming through in all of these clouds. Oh. So, oh. yeah, that's, that's, that's us, really. Tracy, it's uh, beautiful. It's so beautiful. I did have someone who came to my studio briefly while I was painting it, Tony. I haven't told you this, but I felt it was apt for you because they looked, took, looked, took one look and went, oh, my God, it's ethereal. It's like there is an angel sitting there looking over you. And I felt that that's you probably for a lot of people doing what you're doing with your show. So I hope you enjoy oh. it. Oh, Tracy, it's so beautiful. I'm just beyond grateful to have partnered with you over this last six weeks and to have one of your artworks in my home will just forever remind me of this time and our work together. And I can't wait to showcase what happens for you as an artist and an, an artist in business from now on. So, audience, this is the end of our six weeks series of shows, but rest assured, I will continue to help document Tracy's journey and to interview her whenever we have something exciting happen. happen. So, the plan is that I'm going to do some video interviewing when Tracy gets close to opening her new space and then as Tracy gets to go and have events in that space uh, and fill it up we'll keep doing progress updates for the audience of Radio Tony and Tony TV. Tracy Eaton we are completely out of time I have adored this collaboration I've been had a wonderful time doing this series and I'm incredibly grateful that I get to present you and your unique awesomeness to the world thank you Tracy. thank you tony take care and so much. thanks very much for listening everybody i've had a great time over the last six weeks as well it's been fun fantastic all right audience that's our lot for this week i know we're over again but we had a wonderful show today Tracy, thanks again. And that's your lot for this week. We'll be back in our normal time slot with our normal everyday business show. Uh, and I will keep you updated on what Tracy's up to. Bye for now, everyone. Bye.